Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will create a script to move the character, control it with the mouse, and make the camera follow the character. We also have to talk about the important topic of the per second frame rate. In addition to practice, we will also study theory here. If you hold down the mouse button, the character will run forward. When we move the mouse left and right, the character will rotate. When you release the mouse, the character stops, and we will also make it so that the character can't escape beyond the boundaries of the road. Let's start by creating a new empty object. Create, empty, name it player, and place this object in the center of the coordinates, exactly in the position 0, 0, 0. Now, place your character model into it. And that's it. It is usually convenient to add an icon for empty objects. There is a tab in the inspector where you can add an icon with an inscription. You can just add a roundel like this, for example. Let's add an icon. These icons are displayed in different ways. Right here, on the right side of the screen, you can choose the 3D icons option or opt to forego it. I usually choose the option without 3D icons, then the icons have a kind of constant size, no matter from what angle you look at it, and the icon turns out to be small. We take our character model and attach it to an empty object. Now we write a script that will be on this empty object. It may seem a little strange that we don't immediately move the player model. I placed it inside an object because this is a way of creating a division of responsibility a very important principle. You will have all the logic, movement, and all that on the player object, and this man object is just a model. During the game, the model can be replaced. If, for example, you decide to use some other visual style in the game, you can replace this model. If buying skins is implemented in your game, then it will also be convenient to replace this model. By replacing the model, we don't touch the logic of how the character moves, so it will be very convenient to place it like this. Let's create a new script. It's better to create a scripts folder so that everything is orderly. All the scripts that we have already written will be moved to it. Although they are all test scripts, we'll just delete them later. So, right-click Create C Sharp. We immediately name it. Player move is a good name. And I will transfer this script to player. We access it. And let's make player move forward. In the update, we write transform position plus equals, yes, I want to add a value to it every frame. Transform forward. Transform forward is the direction of the player's z-axis. Here is our player we can rotate it and later we will rotate it with a script. When I rotate it, its local axis, where this object is directed, change. I just want the player to always run along this z-axis. Transform forward is just the direction of the z-axis using a script if you want to write it. Also, note that there is a global slash local switch here. It should be in local mode now. It's much better to work this way. Global means that you will not see the direction of the local axis the axis will always be directed as in world coordinates. Here we switch to local. We add a vector that is directed forward to the position of our object every frame. This is the direction of the z-axis. Never forget to save the script, and let's go back to Unity and see what has already happened. Here's what we have. The character ran away somewhere insanely fast. Let's take a closer look at what it looks like. First, I'll click pause, then play to see what this movement looks like frame by frame. Look, it moves in the direction of this axis every frame. In this case, transform forward is a unit vector with a length of 1. It turns out that we literally shift it by 1 meter in this direction every frame. That's basically what we see. But it's pretty fast if we have 60 frames per second, it will run away 60 meters per second. So let's make this value smaller. Just multiply it all by a small value like 0.02. Let's see it now. It runs in the direction of its z-axis. Let me turn it so that it runs forward. Click play. Now it's moving much slower. And here I would like to draw your attention to one very important thing. Now there will be a bit of boring theory. But this is what we will face all the time in Unity. Pay attention to the speed at which it is running now that's relatively slow. But if you now expand the game window to full screen you can just double click it like this. 
click play again. And it's already moving noticeably faster, right? What is the point here? I mean, it seems that we haven't done anything special. The window was just small. Then it expanded to the full screen. And for some reason, the model began moving faster. The thing here is that in Unity, as in any game, there is a certain per second frame rate. That is, if you play a shooter, then you expect it to be displayed 60 frames per second for it to look fast, dynamic, and without lags. And when we expand the window to full screen, we hide the scene window, and Unity starts working faster. Just the scene window loading the processor creates a lag, and by hiding it, we increase the performance. Which is pretty sad. The scene window is just an example. But in fact, if you run this game on different devices on a phone or on a super powerful computer then the per second frame rate will be very different. One device can generate 500 frames per second, another 130 and the character will run away at completely different speeds, which is no good. This happens because of exactly how this update method works. It is called every frame, and how many frames are calculated depends on the power of the computer. A powerful computer will quickly count frames and quickly display them. Accordingly, 500 updates will happen in a second on one computer, while on another low-end device, only 30 updates will take place in the same length of time. That means, since we move by the same value each frame, we can cover one distance on one phone and another on another phone. Something needs to be done about it. The solution here is as follows. You need to multiply this value by the time of one frame. Time dot delta time. Remember, this is the time of one frame. Therefore, the faster the frames are counted, the shorter the time of one frame. By multiplying by this value, we compensate for the fact that there are more frames. This way, it will travel the same distance in one second on both a low-end and a high-end device. This may not be easy to grasp right away, but the conclusion is that your movement does not depend on the power of the device. You just need to multiply any changes in positions and any other values by time.delta time. Time.delta time is a small value, so I kind of removed what we used to multiply. I would like to be able to adjust the speed of the character in general. In the inspector. It's in the process of development. We can multiply it by 5, for example, then it will just run faster. But it's not very convenient to get into the code and change that number. So let's create a new field serialize field so that it is displayed in the inspector. Then private, float, and let's just name it speed. And we multiply our movement by this speed value. In addition, with this approach, speed now already makes some sense. This is exactly how many meters it will walk in a second. In Unity, everything is measured in meters. For example, let it run at a speed of 2.5 meters per second. Let it be 3 meters per second. Launch the game. That's a good speed, and when we expand to the full screen, nothing changes the speed will be the same. It is running at the same speed. By the way, you can see the per second frame rate itself here in the game window. There is a stats tab here, and this parameter shows how many frames per second are being executed now. And you can compare to see that if the game window is expanded, this parameter will be higher than when it is hidden. Great, we've learned that. Now, I want to make it run not constantly, but only when we hold our finger on the screen or hold the mouse on the screen. Let's change our script to make it work like this. We need to write the conditions and enter zero and input get mouse button. That is, whenever the left mouse button is held down, we will execute this line. If it is not held down, then the conditions in it will not be fulfilled, and it will not move anywhere. That's it, the game is running. The character is standing, but when I click the left mouse button, it ran. When I release the button, it stopped. Now it's time to get down to character rotations. I want to make it so that when we move the mouse to the right, it rotates to the right, and when we move it to the left, it rotates to the left. I need to turn the coordinates of the mouse's movement into a rotation of the character along the y-axis. Remember, in order to find out the coordinates of the mouse on the screen, we use the input mouse position property. I want to rotate the mouse only horizontally, so mouse position x is what I'm looking for. We also need to find out how many pixels the mouse has moved compared to the previous frame. 
how much it should be turned in this frame is calculated from how much the mouse has moved. For this, we will have to remember the old mouse position. Therefore, here I will create a new variable private, float, and we will name it old mouse suppositions. It is better to name it as specifically as possible, and it's okay that the names of the variables will be rather long. It is necessary to calculate the mouse shift that occurred in this frame. I'm going to create a new variable here and name it float deltax. How do we calculate how much the position has changed? We have to subtract the old position from the current position. That is, the current mouse position minus old mouse suppositions. The change that occurred in one frame will be stored in this variable. After we have counted the changes, we need to say that the old mouse position is now this position. In this code, We've done another new thing here that we haven't faced before. I create a variable right inside the update method. Here I write what type it will have and what it will be named. You can name it however you want and then assign a value to it. So now we can use this variable. Let's create another field here in which we will store the current object rotation angle. Private float, I'll name it Eulery. This way to set a rotation and what angle on the y-axis we will save in this variable is called an Euler angle. We want to add the delta x value to its rotation angle for each frame. We can multiply this by some other value to set that mouse sensitivity. Let's just write it like this for now. And then we assign it all to the object rotation. That is, transform Euler angles equals new vector 3. It will rotate only along the y-axis. So we leave zeros for x and z, and we write Eulery here. By the way, in order to have more space on the screen, I will remove these comments about start and update. You can already see how it works. Click play, and we see that the character rotates when we move the mouse back and forth. There are two problems. First, it always rotates not only when I hold down the mouse button. Let's fix this now. The second problem is that it can rotate anywhere and run back. After all, our game implies that it can only move forward. Let's fix this now. First, let's move all this code from here to there. It will be executed only when the mouse button is held down. The second thing to do is to limit its rotation between two values. If I go to Unity, I want the character not to be able to rotate further than a specific degree. Let's make it minus 70 degrees, for example. We'll make the rotation range from minus 70 to plus 70. We have a convenient method for limiting this Euler angle y value in a certain range. The method is called math.clamp. That's how it is written. First, you write a certain value. Then, its minimum and maximum value. Math is a class with different mathematical functions. Clamp is just one of them. You can see that there are all sorts of sines, cosines, different minimum values, and other things. This will limit our value. Let's see if everything is all right now. Now it only turns when I hold down the mouse button. But here's another problem to solve. When I release the mouse button and click again, there is this sudden jerk. Look, if I click at the beginning here, then here, then it suddenly jerks. The fact is that we remember the old mouse position only when it is held down, and at the moment of the first click, the delta is equated to the mouse position that was relevant the last time the mouse was held down. Here's a way you can fix this. Just at the moment of the first click. We already know that the input get mouse button down is the first moment when the mouse button was clicked. Here we will save the old mouse position. That is, the first moment the old mouse position is equal to the current mouse position. Now, everything will be fine. That's it, no jerks. Everything moves well, rotates does exactly what I want it to do. The last thing we need to deal with here is that the character can run away from the road. In addition to the angle, 
we need to limit how it is moving. We will do this using the clamp method as well. In this place, where we add a position to it, let's do one more intermediate operation. I will create a new vector and name it new position. What is the new position? Where should our character be? We need to add this shift that happens in one frame to its current position. That's it. Delete this line now. But we will not assign this new position to it immediately. First, we need to make sure that it didn't run off the screen and that the coordinate of this position is not too large. We are now interested in this x. This position along x should not be more than a certain number. So we write new position dot x equals clamp. Then new position x again, and let's say, from minus 2.5 of this border of its movement. After we have calculated the new position and clamped it, we assign it to the object. And that's it. Let's make sure everything works. So we hold it down, rotate it, everything seems to be limited by this border, and it doesn't run anywhere else just the way I want it. A significant part of our gameplay is ready. We also need the camera to follow it. Let's do that too. Here's what we're going to do with the camera. It's right here now. I'm going to create a new empty object in the player position. Game object create empty. Let's name it camera center. I will place this object exactly in zero coordinates so that it is exactly where player is now. And I'll attach a camera to it. You place it inside it. Now, if this camera center object always follows the player, then we will get what we want. We will create a new small script for the camera and name it camera move, for example. Assign it to the camera center object. Here, we need to do a very simple thing we are only interested in the update method. All these things can be deleted. Here, we need a link to the player. Transform. Let's name it target, and in the update we'll just write that the position of this object in every frame should equal the position of the target. Save it. And as a target, just drag the player object here. So, we see the camera is following it, rotating, and it works, but the player is jerking for some reason. This kind of jerking is something we often face in Unity, and in this case, it can be corrected as follows. You need to write update late for the method. That is, there is an update method and there is a late update method. This is also a special method that exists in Unity, and its peculiarity is that it is called after all updates. We also need to move player to a certain position at the beginning, and only then the camera will follow it. These things happening in a different order is exactly what leads to those little jerks. And late update enables us to control the order in which the scripts will be called. All updates of all scripts occur first, and only then late updates. Certain things like the camera following something need to be done in late update. You can get lucky. If you do both in the update, then you don't control the order of the scripts. Some update may be executed first, and you will not even notice this problem. In our case, we were unlucky with the call order, and it was jerking. So now we've done everything perfectly and everything works properly. The character is ready to run through the gate and collect coins. It really wants it. To sum up, transform forward is a unit vector indicating the direction of the local z-axis of the object. Time.delta time is the time of one frame. If we change some values in the update method, then we must multiply this change by the time.delta time value so that it does not depend on the frame rate. 
The clamp method limits the variable between the minimum and maximum value. Select pivot and local modes so that the position and orientation of the object axis is correctly displayed in the scene window. The late update method is called every frame after all update methods, and it is convenient for controlling the order of script calls.